guys, it's that time of the year and we're ready to start breaking out the barbecue, right? Well, before you do that, let me point out that there's some do's and don'ts when it comes to make great southern barbecue. Now, in the first place, before you even think about doing your chicken, your pork, your beef, whatever on the grill, makes or breaks, the men from the boys when it comes to great barbecue is what's known as a dry rub. Now, if you've done any type of research online, you'll find out that there are tons of different dry rubs. You got your Carolina rub, you got your Memphis rub, you got your Kansas City rub, you got your Nolan's rub. Practically every part of the country has some kind of rub. And you'll notice there's some slight variations between the forms, but the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that all dry rubs rely on the four S's. That is sweet, which in this case we're going to use brown sugar. Salty, I'm going to be using something called spice salt here, but you can use regular salt, you can use Himalayan salt, there's all kinds of salts. Savory, and for savory I'm using Herbes de Provence, which is a French blend of herbs. I'm going to use some cumin and our friendly neighborhood garlic powder. And last but not least, you want something a little spicy, a little piquant. I'm using hot Hungarian paprika. You can also use cayenne pepper. It depends on how hot you want to get it. So let me show you how to put together what I call my patented gold dust dry rub, which you can use on chicken, beef, pork, pretty much any kind of meat that you choose. And then I'll show you exactly how we apply it. This will be our first step in setting up our great barbecue. Now watch carefully because this is a very delicate maneuver. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some sweet. So like I said, we're going to use a couple tablespoons of powdered sugar there. And we'll chop that up a bit. And I'm going to give it a nice dose of the salty. Okay, and I'm going to start throwing in some herbs. Put a little bit of the herbs de Provence in there. Gonna hit it up with a little bit of cumin. And if you were doing our Mexican dishes earlier, you'll notice we were using that in those as well. In fact, I'm gonna take this off and put a little bit in there. Now bear in mind, this, this rub will actually keep for months as long as you keep it refrigerated. Give it some that. And last but not least, we're gonna give it a nice healthy shot of hot stuff, our Hungarian paprika. Alright, now we're going to do, we're just going to mix it all together, and again, it don't make smell of vision, but boy does that smell good. Alright, then, for the moment you've all been waiting for, or should I say the moment the meat's all been waiting for, which is the rub. It's like a poultry spa, and that's why, it's, why they call it rub, boys, you got to rub it in. You want to get it on the legs, you want to put it on, reach underneath, put it on the wings. And you're going to want to let this set up overnight in the refrigerator once you finish rubbing the dry ingredients on. And again, make sure you get a nice liberal coating of this stuff because this is what's going to make your barbecue pop. And we're going to do the same thing with our spare ribs here. Nice coating. And rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. Because one first thing I'm going to teach you about doing great southern barbecue is that nothing happens in a hurry. Everything is done, it takes time, but it's time well worth spent because your taste buds will thank you later. That's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap these up in a little bit of plastic. I usually just put them put a bag over the plate, stick it in the fridge overnight because you want to let it sit there and marinate in the dry rub overnight. And then I'm going to show you how to set up the barbecue, which actually we're going to be using a little smoker, which uh, if you've been paying attention to our episodes, I kind of did a little promo on it. And I'll show you how to make what I call the lazy man's gourmet, because there's nothing easier than smoking meat for six hours. And then when you pull that lid off and that flavor comes out and the meat falls right off the bones, that's as good as it gets.